Hello everyone, my name is Amy. I'm the coordinator of the Kildare Readers Festival. I'm delighted to welcome you to this fascinating talk featuring artist Margot McNulty, writer Shona Gilligan, and facilitated by Claudia Doyle, keeper of the Irish Folklore Division at the National Museum of Ireland, as part of Kildare Readers Festival. This event is part of a full and exciting programme of both online and in-person events, so please make sure to check out kildarereadersfestival.ie for the full lineup. Before we get started, I'd like to briefly introduce Margot and Shona. Shona Gilligan is a novelist and short story writer living in Kildare. Her writing has been published in journals such as The Stinging Fly and New Welsh Review. She has a PhD in creative writing and teaches in further and higher education. She is particularly interested in exploring the crossover of art and literature in storytelling, the depiction of historical events in fiction and creative processes. Margaret McNulty was born in Ackle, County Mayo and studied fine art in Galway and completed her MFA in NCAD Dublin. In April 2021, Mayo County Council awarded her a residency with the Jackie Clark Collection Ballina. The commission is part of the decade centenary celebrations. Margot has exhibited widely with solo exhibitions and group shows in Ireland and internationally. Mantles, awarded a Creative Ireland bursary, is the second collaborative project between Shona and Margot. Mantles explores the themes of heritage and sense of place symbolising Bridget through archival art artefacts and site visits and aims to create, through words and new images, new representations of Bridget as an archetype of the sacred feminine. With this event, Shona and Margot will revisit their work on Bridget in the light of what the other has created, thereby having art and writing reignite and complete the process. While this conversation between Shona, Margot and Cloda focuses on community symbols, rituals and wells associated with Bridget, the book Mantles Encountering Bridget, published by Arlen House in October 2021, also offers critical reflections of the stories and histories of Bridget's life. The two workshops on October 9th will give participants an opportunity to explore Bridget's stories and histories and personal connection to the sacred feminine through words and images. We hope that this event sparks ideas and debates, so please feel free to help us continue the conversation online using our hashtag Kildare Readers Festival or KRF2021. My name is Clodagh Doyle and I am the keeper of the Irish Folklife Collection but I also studied folklore in UCD um, in a past life many years ago but I was really delighted to be invited by Shauna Gilligan, writer from Kildare and Margaret McNulty, the, the artist from Roscommon to be involved with this Mantles project, just this, this segment, this um, webinar where we're going to discuss about Bridget and the project so far. Shauna, tell us more about the project. Yeah, so um, this is our second collaboration to myself and Margot. We worked um, on a, a one previously uh, with funding, thankfully, from Kildare and Common County Council called Duality. And uh, sort of the commonality between the two projects is Kildare, obviously with Bridget in this one. And um, so we've been working on this collaboration for the last six, six, seven months, really. Um, I suppose one of the interesting things about it is in terms of what happened with COVID and uh, restrictions with the pandemic, um, I suppose the biggest thing for me as uh, in terms of my research was that I wasn't, wasn't really able to get access to a lot of primary sources. Yeah. Um, uh, so the National Archives or the National Library of Ireland was open on May 17th and I was at that door <laughs> on that day. Yeah. Um, myself and Margot had permission to see some really, really interesting archives, um, artefacts in the Delaney Archive in Carlow College. But um, again, unfortunately, we weren't able to get access, I you know. know. So a lot of online things do yeah. and looking up things, schools collection of folklore and things like that. And that's exactly what happened. So, you know, the early research was the online stuff, the schools collection, mm. Dukas, um, which just, it's, it's a mine of information. It's absolutely brilliant, brilliant yeah. to have those things digitised. And Margot, when did you actually start this project? Um, we started it in um, about six or seven months ago, is it, uh, Shona? Yeah. And, um, because our project is going to be based on site visits, which we did finally get to, um, it was limited in that much, but um, I took a series of photographs in different sites uh, locally in Roscommon. I did photographs there in Drum. Yeah. And then we came to uh, Kildare, which we did a site visit together, and then up to uh, Foggart, which is in, in County, County Loud. Loud. Yeah. Uh, which was a, a fantastic visit as well, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah. So the my images in the project are uh, photographs basically, and I have one photo etching, 
which we'll see, which is called the Bree Jug, which was one of your images that you sent on to me from the uh, from the collection. From the collection, yeah. yeah. So it's a photo etching. Yeah. So that's included as that's well. That's brilliant. Which I think is really interesting. All of those. Yeah, I'm very lucky because I work with such an amazing collection, and like we probably have every style of bridge across in the country, of which there are many, but there's probably around 300 and. 33, yeah. I think, Bridget crosses, but a lot of breed dogs, which are these doll effigies of, of Bridget. And, and you know, thankfully in the museum, we I deal with the calendar customs and one of the exhibitions there for spring, the, we can actually, we, it was a Ryark film and uh, that was done in Donegal. And some we've put some film footage also with Biddy Boys from, um, from County Kerry. So maybe we could have a look at that video yeah. because I yeah. could even talk through it. It's silent, um, but it was done in 63, I think, for Ryark. And, um, and it's, as with Bridget, it's never the feast day itself, the 1st of February. It's always the eve beforehand. So it's never, it's always Halloween is the eve of the 1st of November and winter. But I mean, the, it's always this sense that you, everything happens the night before and it's that, and that's that time just before a season. It's always a little bit when you're not quite in one season, you're in the other, not quite in the other. It's almost a liminal time where people believed in the other world, foretelling yeah. the future, just more connections to another world, you know. Um, so, so in the video, she, the, this is what would happen. People would actually have a meal in honour of St. Bridget. So when we talk about feast days, it's always the feast is still okay. important, you know, it's yeah. having the meal. And yeah. so what we see in the video is that usually the oldest daughter will go outside to bring in the material they're going to make the, the crosses with. And they can be rushes or reeds. And in this case, um, they've, the, they've the rushes brought in. And, and then the, fa the oldest daughter probably knock on the door three times and she says, are you welcome? She says a prayer and asks, are they welcomed? Are they ready to welcome Bridget into the home? And, and then they all get down their knees and pray and say yes. And then the father will use a holy water sprinkler and sprinkle the, and bless the, the material they're going to make the crosses with. And later on then people will have a meal. And in this case, they're having a meal of potatoes, which is one of the most important crops and one of the ones that you want Bridget to protect. And so much so that a lot of our artifacts incorporate the potato into them. And so in this, they're having a meal of potatoes and I think one of the men there, you can see he's been away, he's got a lot of tattoos yeah, and yeah, yeah right, he's yeah. been working probably in, in Glasgow and shipbuilding. But uh, brilliant yeah, moment, and it? then yeah. of course, the, and the way the young daughter, she just, and she's, she's living in Belfast actually, she, I looked her up, but um, she, um, she just lifts, effortlessly yeah. lifts the yeah, pot fantastic. off the potatoes off the thing. And you know, I, for me in the museum to lift those iron pots empty, really it's hard to believe, but anyway, so, and they all take a pounder and they pound the potatoes. And you know, when the word pothole actually it comes from that, okay. you know, those curved bottoms of the three legged pots, when you had a clay fo floor in a yeah. house, that yeah. would actually create those kind of like moon indents oh, or something. Yeah. And that's your original and pothole. That's and that's where the word pound, 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 but pound, also poundies come from poundies that as well, coming, which are yes. the mash and the potatoes. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. pounding. And they all took a go at that. So there must yeah. be some significance of being involved in that and taking a turn yeah. and that's a very like with the, with the churn people taking a, ch a dash of the yeah. churn yeah. it's yeah. almost yeah. being part of it anyway they all sit down and make the crosses and then they all put the crosses up and uh, they make all different styles of crosses but the ones that they've made in the video are kind of diamond shapes which are actually much more popular than a lot of the ones we the the RTE one you yeah. Know? yeah yeah so this is an example yeah. of the Bridget cross which is up in Fogart which is in in the at the Bridget's well and then we have uh, some slides of the crosses that are in the museum, yeah. which are these ones here, Clodagh. The one them, yeah. on the, uh, the, uh, the one one singular the, one, yeah. is it? That looks really interesting. It's, I suppose when we think of Bridget, we often think of fertility. A lot of diamond shaped crosses, and you can see on the, with the collection, but the blue background, a lot of diamond shaped crosses. But you know, that would be very popular, all different shapes of diamond shapes. And people would have made different ones for the barn. You might make a selection in your house. Yeah. But these three armed crosses, that would be, there's sh crosses in the shape of wheels. There's kind of, there's definitely the fertility element comes out in Bridget, yeah. and sometimes you even see 
almost in the crosses, like yeah. that, mm, like yeah. the three armed cross there. And it's yeah. interesting to hear about the uh, commonality, the way you describe, you know, the sense of community within a family and everyone gathering together yeah. and, you know, sort of in our site visits and then in the research that I did, even the secondary research, that really came out in a lot of the literature, yeah. the, you know, the bringing people together and, you know, everyone looking after each other I and know. the minding um, instead of the sort of individualistic yeah. sort of Western <laughs> capitalist society where we live know. now, you know. Because it's all about looking to Bridget for protection mm -hmm. and looking, it's, it's Thanksgiving because you're glad you have all your butter and your potatoes and you can have this feast to her. But the thing is, it's also that you are really, you haven't even sowed your potato crop and you're already hoping and that she'll protect it. And then you're hoping for protection that everyone will be feeling well. So all of the other objects are about protecting the family and their health. And it's, and I suppose that's happening throughout the community. Um, but certainly Bridget is one of those ones that's happening in the family home, a bit like Halloween. Mm. You know, it's that sense of togetherness and family yeah. at the time. Yeah, it reminds, it reminds me of, of Halloween a lot, you know. Yeah, I might yeah. bring that up in one of the essays I, I talk about. No. Okay, um, that's beautiful, the, the relic. This is the, um, the relic that um, Shauna took photographs of it. Do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so, um, because of the various restrictions on getting access to, to the primary research and artefacts, um, you know, I started using secondary sources a lot. Um, and there was a reference to a relic of St. Bridget's Mantle in Ireland uh, in several of the texts, but not all of the texts. And yeah. it's one of those things that kept jumping out at me. And I was thinking, you know, is it real? Does it really exist? You know, and um, so some of some of the, the texts would say it was a monastery in Dublin. Other texts mm -hmm. specified what monastery it was. So I actually just emailed the monastery. Mm -hmm. um, it was the Redemptive Nuns in Drumcondra. And I got a reply really quickly from um, the prioress, Sister Gabriel Fox, who invited me in to see it. Wow. So it was one of those things that, you know, you follow a thread when you research you're not sure it lead anywhere and you know it really literally <laughs> was was gold it's amazing um it was quite an amazing trip how um, big is that piece it's very very small oh. uh, probably looks bigger on the on the on the on the screen there it's, it's size. yeah, yeah it's is it kind thick. of an inch or so or less uh, my judgment on size is <laughs> great, <laughs> but uh, I mean the, the 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 casing is about about that so you know oh so yeah, it is, yeah so it's a small I know the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Um, and she was saying actually that I said, do many people come in to see it? And she said it used to be in a local church, and um, they to keep it for, they keep it for safekeeping in the in the monastery. Mm -hmm. And um, she said people used to come and, and see it. And yeah. you know, she said it, it is a very powerful, a powerful, powerful relic. So it's a mantle. It's the, when we talk of Bridget and your title of your project is mantle. So mantle is cloak, and in Ireland we have the mantle maker or the cloak maker for women and associated with wearing a cloak for, for maybe getting married. But the mantle of St. Bridget is coming back to that story that you had researched, the, the classic one, you know, yeah. in Kildare, yeah. how she got the land. <laughs> the cloak and the nuns, yeah. you know, each the magic cloak, you know, yeah. 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 The, the breed dogs yeah. are co connected with uh, brides as well, aren't they? Yes, Which I they didn't realise. I thought they were, uh, I thought it was a, an image of Bridget, actually. Yeah, but it's not. and it is. It's a doll effigy of Bridget, but I, Bridget is the bride in that case. So she, okay. and breed dog, Nowadays, if you're getting married, and in Irish, the bride oak is the bride. You know, that's okay. the the bride and groom. The bride oak is the word for bride. But, but when you think of a lot of our um, doll effigies of Bridget, she's wearing the white veil, not a veil mm. of like you know a nun or something. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. she's the bride, bride of Christ, I suppose. But the kind of um, yeah. So I, I suppose, and she's wearing something over her head and mantles no matter what whether they're the cloak or anything to go around you often it's that hood yeah do you remember that lovely scottish yeah. widow's ad that's, Th right, that's yeah. the type of cloaks we <laughs> had you know yeah, yeah. i mean that and we still have a load of those in the irish folk life collection the museum so these beautiful cloaks with amazing hoods on them and um and and mantles are usually lots and lots of fabric in them yeah. so that yeah. you can't um it's almost a luxury item because you have so many tiny pleats and stuff here. It's ma it means that you can have, like Bridget's cloak, it's expanse, like it's it's it? expanse yeah. of material yeah. and you ha can afford to have all these creases and pleats and it's like, how can you afford to waste such 
uh, amount material. of material. So it's it's a real mm. status symbol, yeah. but that's classic in folk life. I was going to talk about the tradition of yeah. carrying the brie jugs around to the houses. What was the significance yeah. of that? Then? Well, I suppose, um, you know, at every time of the year, there's like people going from house to house and they're bringing, essentially they're bringing whatever that time it is in in terms of um, the times of the year when people went would be the Wren boys in the west of Ireland, then you'd have mm. the Biddy boys, and and then you'd have Halloween and guising and going from house to house. And generally it's an excuse to get um, drink for a party. <laughs> you know, okay. it usually the used to be a way of just and get, the, the, collecting, the, but it was usually men and adults and oh, uh, boys it? at certain times of the year and certainly around Halloween. Okay. But then it falls to the children. But Bridget and St. Bid the Biddy boys, very strong as just a male. Okay, men. Well, I didn't it's certainly in Kerry, that, no. but very much on the west coast of Ireland, mainly children, children okay. bringing from house to house. Mm. And amazingly, we have a wonderful photograph in the museum from spittle of children outside the door with a white bridge oak and the bridge oak is a doll usually around yeah usually around two feet long um so and generally dressed in white and in fact they they'd say a, a verse at the time this is bridget dressed in white give her a penny for this dark night she is deaf she is dumb for god's sake give her some <laughs> so but you get whatever you got and um so they'd and collect it's something it's sort of echoes halloween again doesn't yes it? it's she like knows. any chance yeah, to go around yeah, should there was yeah, a, yeah. another time any hanseling like going from house to house to get a, a few coins or coppers <laughs> so but the, it seems to be taken much more seriously in terms terms of a male kind of tradition down in Kerry yeah. and th those huge processions that we saw in the video yeah. that yeah. would have been and with the, the dolls there. and, and yeah. they're all vying for the best breathe you know yeah. and we've massive and ones. they're huge and aren't huge they? it's interesting in terms of the color then that was one of the things that surprised me about that mantle because I've done so much reading around oh, the white yeah. and you know the nuns and white and everything so when I saw it and there's this like deep red, red it was quite quite impactful yeah. you know and actually you know so the, the mantle is in Bruges isn't it it the, is the, the yeah, the, is in Bruges. The, and the other image that you see um, on the screen there is that sort of authenticity, the, sort the, of seal. the, the little seal, mm -hmm. the archival number, and then the you know, Bruges yeah. um, to sort of verify it's. it's it came from a came piece from, from there. Mantle, yeah. you know. Because that mantle in Bruges, I'd always wanted to see it. But what it's made of is that red flannel, but it's also, it's been napped, which means mm. that they've used carders to you'd have your plain red flannel which is so associated with relics anyway mm. they're always mm. on the red flannel yeah. background but but when you think of that curly and fur it's almost a curly and furry mantle and yeah and it's thick yeah but actually thick. it's because it's it's been they've used carded. the carders and pulled yeah. out more of the hairs and then we have um, some lovely carded red flannel and we've uh, video in the museum of a man um in in um, in Galway, but he is um, a weaver, and he's doing this finish, and he uses golden syrup, and he dri drips it on the thing, and all How these carded fibers, he twists into curls and so i think that the napped fiber is what's in with um in that mantle okay. it's napped and it's been curled and that gave it much more waterproofness yeah. <laughs> if you can yeah. say that you Pra know. practicality mm. as well, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah well it's a very yeah. wet country i yeah. suppose yeah. Yeah. yeah so will i read a little bit from yeah, one of my pieces yeah. it's a very oh, short no. piece and um uh, so I have a, in the book that's coming out with Ireland, Ireland House um, in October uh, called Mantles as part of this project and um, I have a tr triad of essays um, and the, this is the third essay actually just a tiny little extract from it and it's called What Remains? The Light That Shines From History. Bridget 439 to 524 approximately. <laughs> the gold thread keeping the thick red wool in place appears in my dream. It snakes in from the bottom left and weaves itself around the red wool, which grows and grows and grows. The thrum of my heart beats in my ears. Excitement expands through my body like a wave, and I think of the ecstasy of saints. In my bed in a house in suburbia, where a small window is open a sliver in this warm June, I may be moving a leg, an arm, extending myself out like an offering, wanting the ecstasy of my dream to pass into my waking or night life. The pattern of the cloak, not to be confused with the mantle, or the pattern of the mantle, not to be confused with the cloak, is spread out, cloud-like, above me, and I watch 
in total awe as the thread and the wool fly up to that pattern. The movement is magnetic. The white of the pattern and the blue lines marking stitches disappear behind the bold red, the gleaming gold. I fi feel myself floating upwards. I too am magnetic, I realise, and I hear my laughter raw and real and mad. I become aware that the thread is part of the mantle. It is not holding it in place. In fact, each stitch is a stitch nearer to the divine. Each stitch brings the wearer closer to the sacred, closer to the feminine. I am awed. And then, like Alice, I am twirled right round, whizzing through time, dropping through my consciousness, while the mantle shrinks back to a relic in a golden case in a monastery of light and serenity, and I am standing by my bed in a dark room, staring at the light that shines from history. In my waking sorrow is the strength of love. That was wonderful. Very nice. Oh, so some mm. of the images then, um, we mentioned the Breed Oak, um, Margaret, yeah. do you want to The, the images are have? after, they should yeah. be after. This is, this is my image here on up there, that's the photo etching I've done. Oh great. Which I actually have it here, which I'm going to show it to you. Yeah. Um, so it came out really big, you know, which is really nice. But I just think it's really interesting and I think that may have, I'm not sure if that's the one with the potato head, is it? I don't know because there's fabric on yeah, oh yeah, these The are one the on display, certainly in the museum in, up in Mayo, it's certainly one of them has a potato. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can see, no matter whether these breathe oaks are dressed in whatever they're dressed in and the amount of clothes, they will always have straw underneath. They were always oh, made yeah. of straw. They're, so the straw is, is the, is kind of the the material of the the, the of festival yeah. and is, is it to do with the land as well i think it is i yeah. think everything yeah. is about fertility the land and yeah. you know even when you think back to lunasa it's all about the last sheaf yeah. embodying the harvest this is kind of almost using a sheaf to make to create a bridget you know yeah. and and look to her for fertility and um you know, I, I don't know what they did with the brood oak in all year round. Yeah. I don't know where they kept it. Where you know, know. Yeah, yeah. you imagine people have like collections yeah, of, but you know, different yeah. ones from over the years. And know? also I think as well though, I'd say there's one in a community or you know, but sometimes like there was a woman in a community who kept the wake sheets. There's probably oh, somebody yeah. who kept the breed she oak, kept, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and do they still make them today or is the um, tradition tied out? No, I think it's uh, yeah. but Dan and Kerry, the the Biddy oh, boys are still on okay. the go. It's a big thing and yeah. you know, um and there's kind of like the vying for the best breathe oak still you know okay, what I mean so okay. um so we have presses of these and actually we have that girl in the middle the big one she she's is she's lovely she's about she? five six feet and she lies in she she does she let you open a press and she had some scary looking ones in there you yeah. know so <laughs> but they do, they yeah, do they, look, some of them very yeah. kind of there's some things, there's one or two that looked really the scary. Yeah, you know. they seem to have a power beyond yeah. what they are. So yeah. it's kind of the power of the object again. And I know. What and was I it suppose used you're for? going from Bridget is bringing, what if, if we have that making of the cross at home, yeah. the Breathe Oak is that community aspect. So you're, bringing the, you're bringing Bridget amongst the community and you're mm -hmm. asking Bridget to come into their home, you know. Okay. So, and then often these biddy boys would often bring the girdle. And that's oh, where, yes. it, so you're yes. going from house to house with the girdle. Yeah. You like the girdle. Have an, we have an image of the girdle there too. So there was a thing where, they, the, where the men got into it one way and the women yeah. got into it another way. <laughs> it's amazing because it's a big girdle, but it's called a chris or a belt. So it's a yeah. belt with three, um, th often it would have three pieces of straw. So it's a woven straw belt, yeah. very popular in Galway, mainly Galway and survives longest there. Um, but basically Basically, then going, the biddy boys would go from house to house with this girdle, and it's probably around this size. But the women had an easy way to get into it, so they just dropped it down over their head and daintily stepped outside of it, <laughs> saying a prayer to Bridget and uh, for looking for protection from rheumatism or you know or any illnesses. Yeah. And but the men had to go in. They go in arm right to left. It's always right to left in folk life. You know, is it's it? like yeah, it's kind of right not left. left isn't isn't go, yeah, a good thing. That's the with the devil thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So <laughs> they'd go right arm first and right leg first, and then the head, and then they'd come out of it the Difficult. other side. But and amazingly, it's that transition of going through a vortex yeah, or something. Yeah. So it's the idea that, you know, I think it's that 
actual action of doing something invoking the saint yeah. at the same time. So it's yeah. an amazing object. They're it amazing is. objects. So I they mean, it goes back to what we were saying at the very beginning in terms of liminal spaces and thresholds, mm. and that came oh, up definitely. a lot in, in sort of, I think, you know, Margot and I have talked a lot about like what were we trying to achieve in this project or what were we looking for, you know, mm. and we kept coming back to the same thing. It was around the water, but also it was like a felt sense of, of bridges. So yeah. it maybe it wasn't something concrete or, you know, n not nothing histor historical or, yeah. you know, concrete evidence. It was something that you feel. So, you That's know, uh, something yeah. and like ritual as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and she's not the Catholic, although we've embraced her as the Catholic saint, we're really going back to a much more early Irish traditional yeah. Religion, yeah, yeah. you know, and that Bridget's Wells and going on yeah. the idea of going on pilgrimage, all these earlier manifestations of mm. of connections to the land, really, and yeah. and okay, the Catholic Church has always made sure that they put a feast day exactly where we were feasting anyway, and yeah. this was the end of winter and the start of spring. So let's place Bridget there, and she was already uh, coming from a pagan so, goddess. So it's the mm. times of transition. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have photographs too of uh, of the holy wells, but also the rag tree where yeah. people left stuff behind. And the reason people left it was it to get their prayers answered or to leave a piece of themselves yeah. behind. Was piece, it? I think so. It's to like it's interesting that the the rag tree and you when you associate little small Here's bits of there. ribbon with Bridget anyway. The ribbon Bridget was something That's you left right, outside. Yeah. Yeah. So strangely enough, at a Bridget well to leave a ribbon is quite interesting because the the tradition of putting outside a piece of your own fabric or a piece of ribbon to allow for Bridget to, as she passes through on the eve of her feast day, to bless all the homes and farms with her yeah. that have her cross out, but also to kind of like do the, um, to, to kind of maybe embody, um, imbue that piece of ribbon with her powers of protection that would be put away safely and taken out if anyone had a sore neck or something. They'd put the, the piece of the red flannel or it's, the it's, red it's ribbon. It's normally red, isn't it? Yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah. But white, and we have some other ones in white. Uh, but as you said, at the rag trees, that's a tradition anyway, is to leave something behind. So mm. you'll often get to the Holy Wells and you might find, you know, a little plastic rosary beads yeah. or yeah. you might find like you might find some really sad things. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, babies' things, or yeah, you know, that's what, it's very what sad. We found that yeah, that, that when you'd visit, you'd see all these prayers in little baby shoes. I know, and, and yeah. you leave a vote of it's like a vote of offering at left at the well, but it's so that your intention is placed in that place yeah. and that it's connected there. So, and that by the act of tying something. It's you've tied your wish oh, yeah. to the tree, like a wishing tree. Yeah. But I suppose mm -hmm. the other thing is as well is that you've you've done that and you've left a piece of you behind, and hopefully, your your intention will be remembered. And and my. Mm, I went to see Liz Canner Holy Well, St. Bridget's Holy Well in Liz Canner in County Clare, and I was absolutely, totally struck by it because I went three days after 9-11, which is 20 years ago this month, and so I went there and already there was messages up with the pictures to show, please pray and f that we find this person in the Twin Towers. And I was so moved that people had gone to traditional religion faster Within a day or two, they're they're there yeah. and yeah. they're invoking what what was always there in yeah. us. But I, think I think it's very it. yeah. It's, sorry. it's around the. Um, I think it's very know. deep seated. I think yeah. in people. Sorry for yeah. the yeah. yeah, I was actually going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think but it's, I think it's yeah. around what how bridges in a way has become appropriated, you know, by yeah. different institutions and state as well. And yet the people somehow it's been passed down through all our generations that yes. we know what bridges symbolise sort of inside us almost. I know. You know? Um, like she's the female saint of Ireland. She's like, but of course, like. She's, no, she's not like an official saint, she's our saint, uh, she's our patron saint, like her and Patrick and Calm Gill, like it's like, um, and you know, it's the, the sense that she's the female one and we also associate her with the Virgin Mary as That's well. Right, yeah. So I think you had some pictures like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, from the yeah, wells, wasn't it? Yeah, from the wells, and that there was a, in Kildare they have a Virgin Mary, but she's masquerading as Bridget, but um, I don't have an image of, but yeah. I do have an image, but it's interesting that it, it is the female basically, mm -hmm. and it's where the power is, you know? Definitely, and yeah. that idea of a, her, the Virgin Mary's blue mantle, you know, yes. and 
And strangely enough, our hooded cloaks in the, the museum, a lot of them are come, survived, the surviving ones, they even got one in last year um, from Drimma League in County Cork, and it was, um, but they're generally black because yeah. the older people were wearing them, kind of Victorian respectability around the 1900s or early 1900s. But Lucas has done a lot of work on the, the hooded cloak in Ireland, these beautiful cloaks, and blue was really popular. Yeah, blue beautiful. and red. And, yeah. and, you know, I think, I I think some were made for the Queen of England. I think there was a blue. I'd say. And do, do you think there's a colour associated with Bridget then? I I don't know. I think that they've been. I think that they've often at Wells they've done blue or green. On yeah, her, you yeah, know, it's yeah. like to give her that identity. But of course, um, she she's wearing. She has the 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 blue on her and. Um, yeah, but I think that she's also known as Mary of the Gales. She yeah. So yeah. she's kind of yeah, so she got her connected with on Virgin Wera. So she's uh, she's connected with the Our Lady, but um, yeah, I think that's kind of helps to bring Our Lady to yeah. us to teach us about Our Lady. Yeah, was almost the used Bridget think, exactly because yeah. if you think about where Bridget was herself, she was sort of in a transition period historically. Mm -hmm. You know, between moving, Ireland moving from a pagan country to a Christianized country, and sort of so she almost was crossing that threshold yeah. in her life. You know, that's it. Um, and I think the evoking of the goddess of fertility, the fertility goddess of Bridget, that it existed across Europe. And then that sense of a saint then taking the same name, but also the attributes of fertility and of the land and of the human. And even in bulk, the, the word for, the older word for this feast type yeah. day, like we have Lunasa, Samhain and bulk, um, that could be about the, the bulk being your stomach. And it's almost that ripening of, of, of birth starting in nature so that death that has been th after sound and winter all these buds on the trees all the 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 buds and life and new life so she is associated with this time of that transition on the land as well and so her idea of being a fertility goddess is pretty amazing Isn't like she, she yeah, is associated with yeah, fertility yeah. and even yeah. even yeah. giving a present to uh, newlyweds of a bridge cross would be quite traditional in fact i have one for my own wedding so and I. it was a new bridge <laughs> silver one oh, i have a new bridge silver, silver it's in my bathroom <laughs> actually and i realize now but we were given that when we were um, got married and um and you know with that sense that you know wishing them well and fertility wise yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah, um yeah, so yeah. and i think she is associated with you know cures for barrenness yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you know i i haven't been but is it Randall MacDonald? It's a, in 1600s. There's a in um, Brideswell in Roscommon. There's oh, yeah, a famous which is near one. Me, of yes, course. near you <laughs> and near Albert Siggins, my old colleague. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So he yeah. had taken wonderful photographs for the museum in the. Okay. But basically, it's a lovely well where he is. Where in the 1600s, it was renowned anyway as being the waters were good for infertile women and okay. um, for for pregnancy and I think this man puts a plaque up and invests in doing the well because he brought his wife t to okay. the waters and she she was cured yeah. so that's why that it's in the 1600s line Randall McDonald I should have looked that up but anyway yeah. that's a lovely that's a yeah. certainly where even that fertility is in the water it's yeah. at the well and you know yeah. that's amazing it's yeah. kind of that connection you know yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've taken a series of photographs that are the holy wells which would be the local one which was the drum one but I haven't taken a photograph of I the think other yeah, ones yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. I, I think that the, the whole thing of the water sure. and the different wells associated with, with different, different cures yeah. and even eye awesome. cures as well yes. do you know what I mean and when you think of the story of her eye you probably came up with this one yeah. where she's like yeah. the suitor and you she know. plucks out her eye. Um, she plucks out her eye. Um, it's all so easily. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but a part of that, like for me, you know, reading those sort of stories was it shows her, her character and in terms of you know not being controlled, yeah. and you know she, again it, there's all these different parts in her life where where the the stories differ and they're told with different sort of shades depending on who's telling them and you know. Um, the bits of her travelling through Ireland, the bit with the eye coming out. So you know this oh, yeah. to, make to, her sure, less attractive, to make her less attractive. attractive. And that I that and really took me around the idea of beauty and covering and revealing and everything. Um, and I suppose that was for me where I sort of started the the research, you know, journey um, around 
clothes and girdle and you know the history of the girdle I sort of went down all sorts of rabbit holes um, but I suppose I ended up looking up um, or, or rather immersing myself in in the rule book of the Bridgetine order yeah. um, which is absolutely fascinating because a lot of the, the the items of clothing they mention I didn't know what they were or what they were used mm. for you know some of them you would and some of them are associated with Bridget um, and then some of them are around f fertility but then are, are not about fertility they're about yeah, chastity yeah. so it's all the it's changing yeah. of the symbols that I yeah. found quite interesting mm. you know um, uh, yeah. there, uh, in Fogger too, the uh, well up there had an eye stone as well, which is wow. one of my images That's as well. Right. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and and so a lot of the stones there had to do with the body as well. There yeah. was a different ones. There was ones where you could kneel and there was a yeah. waist one as well. But I thought the eye one, which is one of the images I have it's, there it's as brilliant. well. It's brilliant. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because I think it's just when, when Holy Wells become known for certain things yeah. and on certain days like so yeah. the d St Bridget's Day would be the day to visit the well as yeah. well or the eve before a lot of these times it's the eve before but it's like that it's almost like okay the, the well has a cure but it's even more potent, potent and powerful, yeah, powerful yeah. around these times yeah. so again it's all around so time. your stones are oh, up yeah, there that's, now that's yeah that's that there. one there that's yeah. in black lining cabin it's St Bridget's um uh, the stones, um, I can't tr I can't remember what that's called, but it's in Black Line Cabin where you, it's St. Bridget's stones where you almost, these stones the fit into these stones, curves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's almost like cursing. You could twist them and say a prayer or not and curse them. You should well. reverse it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and and is it easy to find, do I mean, asking? I don't know in Black Line. Yeah. I have never found it, but okay. I did go to Black Line. <laughs> I didn't look for it actually, but I did go to Black Line because there was a, it was a Patrick's well that had right. a cure for eyes as okay, well. And okay. I remember I was doing work on Patrick, but yeah. I forgot to visit this. Yeah. But I did go up at the same time because I was doing Patrick research and I went to Petico and um, Loch Derg. And you know, and that's yeah. where there was the St. Bridget's chair, just right. which is oh, kind yeah. of just yeah. on the edge just of the lake. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she's there, even yeah. though it's his place and it's yeah. St. Patrick's Purgatory and it's one of these ancient pilgrimage across Europe even. And she but she's there and actually on the I didn't go over to the island, but she in the chapel on the mainland, um there was a lovely Bridget cross made out of copper yeah, in the lovely. yeah. So oh yeah, that was one of the But images. her relics are all over Europe as well. I yeah. mean parts yeah. like when you see that little relics we've it's just like seemed to be a big market in saints yeah. bits you yeah. know and <laughs> and there still is there yeah. still is that yeah. was another rabbit hole i went down yeah. <laughs> looking at relics online I know. Um, and like i think <laughs> part of her skull is meant to be in lisbon yes yes and, yeah. and a piece of that was brought back to a, a church in Kilester. Or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? Which I didn't get to visit. Actually, that was one of the ones. That's I mean, that's the other thing with the whole the year that we're doing it in. Like, yeah, you know, the so original plan. We'd wanted to go all around all the bridges, well, but I we know. didn't get to them all. But we will. It'll be part two. There's a wonderful <laughs> historian, Patrick Logan. He had wrote the Holy Wells of Ireland, and then he writes the Cures, and he's all about that. But he's dead now. Fantastic work. But every Holy Well in the country, pretty much, and what they were famous yeah. for, or the ones that even disappeared. You know, yeah. he has them all. I've I've read a lot of it. I've read that one of his books anyway in, in the National Army. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot in it. You know. So um, this is a, the the one of the photographs that. The last one there is the photograph at the St. Bridget's in Falkwood again. It was the second one we went to, which was on the hill, which was an older, I, we think it's an older well, but um, the title is called Portal, so it's yes. almost like into the, the next world. Yeah. And the stepping yeah. down. The stepping down yeah. into yeah. it. Yeah. You could Isn't almost fall into it, yes. you know. Which and I that's like what the one in Brideswell, it's that stepping yeah, down. Yeah. And you're, that, I think even that sort of making that journey yes. is part yes. of the yeah. transition and the cure or yeah. whatever. Because you, you almost kind of fall in and yeah. then you kind of pull your, but you have to get the water, you know, because yeah. yeah. they had little ladles there to take the water Brilliant. out, you know. Yeah. yeah, and Liz Scanner as well. It was lovely. It's like, but again, it's they've built a portal to go through. Okay. So and that's where they keep all the all these things are pinned up. So it know. is like a journey. Yes, isn't it, it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, and it's that whole thing of pilgrimages and mm. and it's it's almost our project as well. That kind of whole traveling to different places, places yeah. until we get to the the journey. Yeah, the end. yeah. And that's mm. why I was asking about you know are some of them easy to find or not easy to find because. Um, you know, you don't want me saying that we did get lost many times. Yes. <laughs> Even though, like, journeys that should have been straightforward ended up being a little bit complicated. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to one well, in fact, but the well, the, re 
feel well, you know, or the mm. one where somehow we felt that she was there was, was somewhere else, you yeah. know. So th all of that sort of, you know, not intentionally, but it just ended up that way, you know. Um, and the two wells in Fogart as well up in the graveyard and then the other one in the shrine, the sort of the official, the unofficial, yeah. you know. So, so it a became a pilgrimage for us. That's, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Through COVID times, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> survival. Yeah, so um, yeah, but it's great to it's great to hear um, you know more detailed explanation of the traditions and stuff. So like, I mean, I found myself reading about traditions when I was looking at the schools collections, and you know. I guess what I was after more was sort of stories and things that e had echoes of other stories, you yeah. know, whereas it's lovely to hear your take on things because you're seeing the overall historical aspect of it and also the overall, you know, how they worked in different re parts of the country and what yeah. survives or what doesn't survive. And it sort of struck me as like a lot of the traditions seem to be, you know, with the with the straw and everything sort of rural, you yeah. know. Well, everything's really connected to the land. And I suppose with all of the calendar customs, uh, everything r mm. comes back to the land especially if you even take Halloween and even Lunasa it's all about working community working together in Lunasa and the metals and bringing in that harvest mm. and mm. you know everyone working together to gather the bounty of the land and then it's it's by the time Halloween comes, it's that you've got all of your fruit harvests in, you've pickled everything, you've no fridges, so you've you certainly it's you've reaped everything that the earth has to give, and then it's downtime, you know, and it's there's nothing growing, and then it's that new birth again with Bridget, and then butter is the big thing, and you know around May time as well as the real sense of the land again, and making sure that and. Same in the west of Ireland, we would have a bonfire night, um, which would be the eve of the St. John the Baptist. Oh, the John's. Yeah, St. Yeah, John's Eve. Yeah, but the thing yeah. is, that's 23rd of June, so his feast day is 24th. But, but that, when I grew up in Dublin, and we had just Halloween bonfires. I'd yeah. never heard of St. John's Eve, yeah. and now, sure, it's all over the west and where yeah. I live now. But um, And it's also practiced in some of the Celtic areas across Europe, in the north mm. of Spain, it's practiced yes, as well. Yes, exactly. It's, a big, it's yeah. a big one, yeah. Nearly like, bigger than Halloween, actually. That's yeah. it. Did you, did we cover a lot of the things there? That yeah, I think I think we've I covered, covered I think, a yeah. huge amount of yeah. what has, and the project now, this, uh, thanks so much for inviting me to be part no, of this no, webinar no. and to get, to be part of it. But I know you're doing so many other things. You're doing things on the 9th of October. Oh, we're doing workshops, yeah, two, right. two workshops, a writing and a here? visual. Uh, it'll be online, so I'm, okay. we're not quite sure where it's going to be based yet, yeah. but um, be online so the workshops will be writing and visual which yeah. will be that great you know great. based around the same yeah subject Team. really and you know yeah. the book so one is the sake of feminine yeah. and one is on place you know yeah. okay. and then with the book that's right yeah, yeah. The, so the book has been published in october arlen house yeah so great. yeah so, so i might what. read a little just we were saying just to end it yeah, um, yeah. The, yeah. this is just an extract um about our part of our trip to kildare because we are in kildare <laughs> um, are you from very close to here I'm from, from Dublin originally. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I live, I live, in I live. Kildare. Yeah, I live in Kildare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I might just give a little flavour of, of what we've been talking about. It's a few minutes' drive to St Bridget's Garden Well, over the motorway and a few turns. The last of which fits just one car going one way. The wipers work hard. The sound of, is hypnotic. We pull in and the rain stops. This small miracle of the sun coming out happens and I run my fingers along the wall as I walk into the garden, the wet grass tickling my sandaled feet, the trees dripping from the downpour. Behind the statue of Bridget, adorned with chrysanthemums, roses, peonies, white, pink, yellow, is a bush with white flowers that look like wild roses, heavy with rainwater. A light wind blows the petals and flurries onto the grass. I smell the flowers, each one that is within reach, but only catch the scent of fresh rain. I'm disappointed, a little flat, and I'm trying too hard. I can see that now. But when I look through the stone arches where the soft snort of a cow catches me, my heart quickens. Tall meadow grass sways. Three small dark birds fly high in the middle distance and wagtails be parade behind the black cow with the yellow tags on her ears. She locks eyes with me and twists her head at an or awkward angle to lick herself. At the flick of her tail, flies rise upwards. She turns back to survey her field. I am in the heart of summer. I touch a petal that immediately falls and then turn away and walk slowly towards the well. 
Prayers and petitions hang on the rag trees. I stand still, survey them, feel the rise of tears. There are so many hopes, so much of life here. Glitzy white sandals dangle from a branch. Shiver, who lost their footing? Baby grows, hopeful and haunted, sag. So sopping wet, they don't even move in the breeze. Born sleeping, a name, a picture. My heart heaves, this place is heavy with leftover hearts. The bird song becomes overwhelming. I watch the wagtails flit and fly. There's a spot of warmth where I stand, right in the marsh among tall yellow buttercups and purple clover. I've brought nothing, no scarf, no sock, no thread, no piece of me that I can leave for Bridget to bless. I've come, as my grandmother would say, with my hands hanging. I look around, touch the leaves of some trees and think again. My hands are hanging, but they are also open. I have brought myself, my full self, with all the losses I carry with me, hanging on a thread behind me, all the Bridgets, generation after generation. Am I leaving something of that heritage here? Isn't presence in itself of worth and remembrance? The water that flows in front of the statue of Bridget is cloudy, and I want to describe it as misty, though I know that's not the right word. I stand there thinking and ask myself, why misty? What is it that I am trying to find? Everything that is hidden, of course, and I stare at the midgets buzzing over the water, miniature creatures swarming, circling. What do they leave or bring to this world within a world? What mass do we put on them? What mass do we put on ourselves? Mm, very nice. Did you take photos at the same place? I, I was. Av I heard the you know the petals, the ones that you took the photos. Of. Yeah, that yeah. was a lovely photo with the yellow and the white flowers, was it? That yeah, you took? yeah. Was, was that the same, same place? place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could hear. I could see your photos yeah, could you? when yeah. she oh, when she was reading and um, <laughs> oh, and was the rag tree there? The rag the rag tree was there too. Oh, yeah, amazing! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's great. Yeah. It's almost like you brought the the you you. I could see all your photos. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You could see yeah. the language. Yes, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, great. Was, uh, so you must have got lots of help with this project. Did you? Who do you? Who? Who's? Funding. Who do you thank? We yeah. have to thank uh, Creative Ireland uh, for funding um, us, uh, me from County yeah. Roscommon, and uh, Shona from Kildare, which is brilliant, and uh, they've been very supportive, which is brilliant. Yeah. And uh, and the Riverbank and, and the Riverbank Kildare Readers right. Festival for this event, yeah. you know, and yourself. And Claudia, thanks a lot, Claudia. It's pretty. You, you really added a lot to the project. Thanks you know? so much, no, uh, yeah. Thanks for asking me. Um, no, it's brilliant. It's I love the. So I love. Yeah. I love it's the objects connection. and I love <laughs> folklore, yeah. so I'm yeah. I'm in my element. It was yeah. perfect. So great, anytime great you want connection. to, yeah, anytime you want to yeah. do another another thing, I'll yeah. I okay, get involved. Brilliant. No Fabulous. problem. Thanks for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you. And I do want to also thank the National Library of Ireland. The staff were fantastic there, and the redemption Christine Nunn's sister Gabriel. Thank you again. <laughs> And I should thank the National Museum of Ireland because yes, it's our image. <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks a lot. And I should also thank the National Fil uh, Irish Film Archive because that it was there yeah. that we got the Ryark um, piece. Yeah. And so, Which is uh, I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's great. But it's lovely that you're able to do this and yeah. um, and talk a bit more about yeah. the project. And yeah. and so Mantles is. It really is that hood, and it is yeah. amazing that we're all covered by it. Yeah, we're covered all covered in the in the mantle, basically. Yeah, the mantle of Bridget. And it's just the recognition of yes. it we need. Yeah. So, listen, thanks very thank much. You much. Thank thanks you very much. Thanks a million. Thanks it was lovely. really lovely to be here. Thank you very much, and thanks to the River Bank. Yeah. Thanks again. Okay. And thanks to the audience for tuning in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>